You want to start this process by flipping all the wood so the lips are pointing towards you. Then drill a 1 quarter inch hole in the center of each piece, making sure that you're as close to center as possible. You want to go at a slight angle, but not at the full 45 degree angle. You want to add some white wood glue or just regular Elmer's glue to each piece and then you want to join the miters together. Then secure this with a one and a half inch or two inch drywall screw making sure it does not poke out the side. It is very important when doing this process to grip the corners very securely. Once the drywall screw grabs, it will hold it firmly in place. Now you want to take a straight edge and a razor and cut the canvas so that you leave two and a half inches all the way around the wooden frame. Alright, here is where the tools come in handy. These are regular stretcher pliers. You can get them at any art supply store. A pair of these is like 20 to 27 bucks. This is a regular $10 stapler. You can use an air stapler or an electric stapler. I've done probably two or 300 of these in the past year and it, I do this with this in no time at all. You use regular 3 8 inch sta uh, staples. You can use 5 16 as well. You don't want to go half inch because the wood becomes virtually impossible to staple into when they're that long, especially if, it, if you have a really dense piece of uh, wood that you used. So we've got this together. We've got our canvas cut. Now the first thing that we do is we're gonna put this ridge part, the lip that we cut, we're gonna put this face down and we're gonna center it to the best that we can, all right? Now the very first staple that you do, you're gonna pick a side and you're gonna go like this and just... The first staple you don't need a lot of tension on the material because you don't really need it. You can actually put, give it a little tug. I'm gonna put two and three in there. So we've got that like that. There's um, there's three staples holding this in place. Now, what you do is you pick this up and you're gonna turn this in for in. It's gonna get a little messy. You can just walk around the table. That works a lot better. But you wanna square it up. Make sure you're still squared with everything. And then this is where you really want to give it some, some tension. You're going to grab it like that, and that's where these come in. You take these pliers, and you use them like a lever. What you want to do is slowly pull the canvas and give it a nice stretch to where you see like these really ugly lines appearing across there. And you staple it down, and now you're going to move down on the same side. Do it again and move down like this. There we go. Right, we've got three down. On long pieces like this, I'm going to eventually put a crossbar in here because the canvas will actually bow it together if you pull it hard enough. If it's a shorter piece, you don't really need to worry about that. Now that you have the two sides, you should have something that looks like that. We're going to rotate it. And we're going to lightly pull on the end, get it up over there, and actually stretch it. I'm going to put a couple staples down here.
Now, if the staples don't go in all the way, this has a little hammer on the back side of it. So you can smash them into place. We're gonna flip it in for in, and then I'm gonna time lapse this, and you're gonna see me working at full speed, and when I get to the important things, I'm gonna stop. Now, this end seems a little short, but with enough stretching, you don't wanna tear the material, you don't wanna pull that hard, but the tighter you do this, the better results you're gonna have, and the nicer looking canvas when you're done. So that's what we have so far. It's starting to come to shape. You can see it's got some ugly wrinkles. As we work all the way around that, that's gonna work itself out. What I'm gonna do is show you how to do the hidden corner fold. This, at this stage, you can actually go ahead and do this. What the hidden corner fold is, you wanna pull it really tight. Instead of having a triangle that looks like that on the end that's really ugly, what you do is you pull your corner really tight, you lift the material up, and you pull it snug like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a staple right here in the side. And we're gonna take the material and we're gonna fold it over like that. That's the edge that you're looking for right there. You want an edge that looks like that and then you're just gonna stretch this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this done and uh, when we're done, I'll show you how it should look. Okay, we got this one done, and if you did everything right, it should look something like this, and it should sound like this. It should be nice and tight. That means you did it right. If you have uh, one corner that's sticking up, this should lay perfectly flat against the wall or any surface. If you do have a corner that's bowing up, it means you either didn't use a perfectly straight piece of wood, which is very important to start with, or your miter cuts were at a little bit of an angle. They have to be at a perfect 45 degree angle, and zero degrees this way. So just check your saw if that happens. These are gonna take a little bit of experience to do to get them like this. Now, at this stage, you can pretty much do anything you want with it. You can paint on it. If you're gonna use this as like a wind sail, uh, you can just put any regular latex paint on it and then clear coat it with an enamel. If you're an artist and you're gonna be painting this, you can go out and buy something for around $50 a gallon called gesso, which that's your choice or you can use something better like kilts, which is $12 a gallon. Any good white latex paint works as a nice base for this. You just basically cover the surface and you end up with a surface that looks like this. This surface right here will hold the paint very well and it'll do everything that you need. I have future videos showing some uh, green art ideas and we're also gonna have future videos showing how to use this concept to make a vertical access wind turbine. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy our videos.